change its action from authorities at all spheres, on all spheres uh, of, of, of government. So that conversation continuing here on your view uh, with me on Kobutze JJ Dawan. After the, the headlines, we come and ready. Uh, we bring you the interview we had yesterday in Limpopo with the Premier of Limpopo, Date Stanley Matabata. You've got to stay tuned for that. Let's go to the headlines now. PBS curators take on former President Jacob Zuma and the Ingoniama Trust. They're asking that he pays back the full amount owing on his bond or he could lose his Inkandla property. Relief for sexual offences survivors in Limpopo. Government is reopening specialised court to help them. Citizens bear the brunt of the decaying state of hospitals in Zimbabwe. This as the health crisis was continuing. And US President Donald Trump sacks his national security advisor, John Bolton. Well, that's your news headlines at 10 o'clock. Of course, as JJ mentioned, his interview with Olympopo Premier Stanley Matabata. Let's have a look. Welcome to your view with me on Kuputse, JJ Tawani. Tonight, we are coming to you all the way from Tuseng next to Lewakomu in Limpopo. And uh, we are guests of the premier of Limpopo, that is Ten Matawate, who are at his home in Tuse. Good evening and thank you so much for joining us. Good uh, evening, tonight. JJ, and good evening to your viewers. What is Tuseng? Tuseng is a farm, it's a village, in fact, under Hoshim Pathele. Mm. It is called Tuseng. In fact, this Tuseng is a yeah. corruption of the wheat. Thousand. In fact, yeah. in Africa, it's Dezen. Dezen, yeah, yeah. Because the farm was purchased uh, with uh, 1,000 pounds. So now, sure. because our people could not, uh, you know, we babies have got some heavy time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So 1,000 for, for them, yeah. Dezen for yeah. them was... It, it, uh, it, 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 it's very interesting that it, there's a reference in the name yeah. about the, how the farm was acquired. Yeah. Which will make the, in the discussions about expropriation without compensation <laughs> interesting yeah. for people here. Are they gonna? Are they gonna also have to give up this farm after they bought it for a thousand pounds? No, I don't <laughs> think so. It won't be possible because hey, yeah. it was purchased long ago. It's, I think it's more than a century ago. Seriously, mm. is, is a land issue a big issue in Limpopo given the agricultural, uh, uh, you know, pursuits of many many Very of your citizens? Deep. And, and how, how are they receiving it? Uh, because I would, ex I, I would think maybe some of the, 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 particularly the white farmers, agricultural farmers, must be in a big panic and they must have uh, reached out to you by now. What is the sentiment around that? The land issue is a very big issue. Remember, we are a rural, a rural province. Mm. Limpopo is 80% rural. Mm. So that says to you, and agriculture is one of our uh, key like, competitive areas, economically. Mm. Mm. So... That will tell you that uh, land should be a very critical matter. Hence, you've got uh, a two-dimensional uh, type of situation when it comes to the land issues in this province. Mm. You've got the land where different Mahoshis yeah. are contesting for a particular piece of land. Uh, that is black on black land uh, expropriation. And then you'll then have where white farmers, white commercial farmers, you know, uh, took land from black uh, uh, villages. Mm. Like uh, uh, you, you would have uh, the Loscop Valley farm. Mm. Basically, that was uh, Koshima Terrace land. Okay. Koshima Terrace and Koshima Gadime. Mm. So, so, so it's a very critical. Remember. That is a prime land. That is prime mm. land. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, very productive. Very, very productive. Land. Yeah. <laughs> so you've got this contradiction as to whether uh, you have to go uh, in a very what aggressive manner. Yeah. Or perhaps you should push the uh, foot. You should go bit by bit, try mm. to negotiate so that you don't affect the production process. 
you know, because that also you need it. Because I remember our uh, economy is actually based on those three things, agriculture, mining and tourism in the middle. In, yeah, in, 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 in the province. And in the it, province, it, yes. It may affect how you, 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 you are able to deal with, with, with challenges of poverty here and, and un, un, unemployment. Should it be handled in a reckless manner? Because yeah. surely the, the, the whole issue of what you've just said tells me that there's a recognition that there is a, a social cohesion element mm. in these discussions about land. Yeah. You were at Nazarek. Was there really a deep discussion about what the implications of this uh, uh, resolution would be? I mean, at that time, it was not even adopted by parliament yet. I mean, the ANC sort of took its own time to do so and only did that, you know, at the back of an, of an EFF resolution. But take me back to Nazarek on the land debate. Remember, Nazarek couldn't have uh, debated it intens uh, intensively because okay. uh, it was discussed very intensively in previous at, at, at the police, at the police, uh, even, even the even police in, conference. Yeah, even in the Polokwane conference, uh, in Mangaung, we did discuss it uh, intensively. You know? mm. And then... Um, Nasrex was actually saying, what are you doing with the Polokwane resolution? What mm. are you doing with my own resolution? Uh, is it Stellenbosch resolution? Mafike? All these conferences were revolving yeah. on this issue of land. Because remember, the ANC, the, uh, the foundation of the African National Congress, basically was on land and the people mm. in the name. Land, the people, and the, uh, the economy. Yeah. yeah. Hence, you've got these three colors, black, green, and gold, mm. know, representing the politics of the African national mm. So it has, the land issue has always been a very serious issue. It's just that the, what I'm saying now, yeah. you know, uh, where people were saying that, but when we go aggressively on this thing, the, the leadership of the time, when we go aggressively on this thing, are we not going to upset mm, the and, and production process yeah. Yeah, and all things such as that? Mm. So, in terms of uh, uh, way forward now, do you believe, and, and, and I'm asking you this now as part of the ANC collective now in the country, do you believe that you are on track in terms of ensuring that expropriation without compensation is not seen as just something in a sense that it was convenient at the time, which is last year, ahead of an election that is so heavily contested and faced with an opponent that made this thing a daily bread. I mean, you are telling me now the ANC is based on land. Very few leaders of ANC even ever say that, let's be honest, that is based on land. You know, uh, in fact, the, the, the AFF will probably just laugh and say, yeah, but when we were there as youth leaguers, you just chased us out of the NGC, you say, go keep quiet, you know. Tell, tell me your sense of how you see this panning out. But remember, remember uh, the, the, the Youth League has always been very aggressive on this issue of land. Eh? Yeah. Starting from yeah. the time of Kitam Gav, you know. Mm. They have always, always been aggressive on the issue of land. Uh, even at Nasre. Except the current ones, man. The current ones are, are not but aggressive on anything. <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, remember that at Nasre, yeah. the resolution was sponsored by the youth. Is that remember? so? Yes, the resolution on land was sp sponsored by the youth. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so the youth have always been uh, very passionate when it comes yeah. to the of land. Mm. All right, the Mpopo now uh, one one of the provinces, uh, uh, you know, and I'm not sure how to bring this into the conversation nicely. One of the few provinces in the new South Africa that actually had its administration taken over by national government. I'm, I'm sure it's long ago, so we've forgotten a, a little bit. But have you, will you say to me in your 100 days, as you, as you assess it, that you have recovered from that kind of unfortunate history where, you know, the national government had to come in and intervene? I know I, I'm correcting myself to say you're the only ones because mm -hmm. the uh, uh, Northwest was also uh, uh, and yeah, some, some in Eastern Cape. But you were the first ones where they had to experiment uh, what is called Section 100 or something, right? Yeah. Tell me whether you have recovered from that. I would say we have recovered. But, uh, you know, after recovering, you always have some other, uh, should I say, 
uh, some signs of uh, of the past mm. you know like for example um, when the administrators can, came in in 2012, mm. 2012 when they came in they concentrated mainly on the stabilization of the finances yes yeah. uh, as a result they stopped paying suppliers sure uh, yes when <laughs> when we took over we found a huge invoices a, a like invoice, this, yeah. of invoices <laughs> which we had to deal with they because they had to stabilize the finances yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, and they stopped implementing uh, projects like for example you would find now people um, uh, rising and saying that we would want our road to be built because we were promised this road in 2009. Yeah. Uh, up till now, the road has not built. We were promised this road in 2012, 2011, and all these kind of things. You know, these are the kind of things that we are still encountering now. Yeah. But when it comes to the finances, we are very stable. When it comes to the because one other thing that was not existing, mm. non-existent that time, was the systems. Mm. You are the governance systems. You know. Yeah, contract management system, payment systems, you know, all those those systems that when, will... When it, when it, when it in collapse. Yeah, they <laughs> collapsed, you know. Uh, the province was uh, operating as if there is no law in this country. You know? My goodness. <laughs> but but, but uh, the province, I want to link it to who is responsible because the ANC has always gotten like 80, it's crazy sort of uh, percentages of, of voter turnout, number one. And then voter support, yeah. right? What then went wrong? Uh, 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 are you saying that the co corruption and mismanagement was was a little bit out of control? And are, are you, by extension, mm -hmm. saying to me that you are now uh, you having a handle on it, and that people understand that this is a new dawn? Yes, yes. I think people do understand now uh, that this is now a new dawn, because currently you can't do things like. Uh, they used it's, it's, it's business and mm. you can't do things like it uh, people used to do things that time yeah you know? there are systems now you've got what you would call a dashboard okay where the premier or the hod or the dg as the accounting officer would be able to uh, uh, assess or perhaps detect yeah when things are not going right in the department of education remember mm. When we took from a central yeah, central yeah, yeah, view point of view, of view yeah. yeah, because of these systems that I'm talking about, you know, the Department of Finance, Treasury, it is able to detect a lot of things. That the only problem that we are still facing yeah. now, where which I would say we haven't done much to yeah. improve, is on in municipalities. In municipalities, we still have a long way to go. Yeah, but with government departments, remember yeah. when we took over uh, in 2014. Mm. We had about six government departments getting this payment. Yeah. And then we then said we are going to declare to declare war on this disclaimer. No government department in the coming two years must yeah. get it. I want us to analyze that a little bit after the break in terms of what would then were the big causes of those disclaimers. Because at the heart of those disclaimers, as the Auditor General has told us, every year in and out is wasteful expenditure, irregular expenditure and so on. And I want us to know whether we are at the handle. But uh, we'll do that after the break. We are in Tuseng, or otherwise... Tuseng. Tuseng. You yeah. could say Tuseng. <laughs> and this is at the Premier's home out in Limpopo. Uh, we are visiting him to try and find out what is the state of the province. Stay tuned.
Welcome back to your view with me on Koputse JJ Tawan. If you've just joined us, we are in Toseng, where we are visiting the Premier of Limpopo to talk to him about all matters, uh, the state of the nation and the state of the province. And as you can hear, I hope you can, the chipping of birds and <laughs> what you can smell is the, is the, is the cooking buswa or bukhove in the background. Yeah. Uh, but that one, will, you, you will never even know whether it's true or not. <laughs> Premier, let's go to... Let's go to the... Tell me about the beds quickly. These beds in yeah. Spady, they are called Gitar. Gitar. Gitar, yeah. Wow. Yeah, you know, um, the royalty. Yeah. In Alepeta, yeah, Wow. Because Gitar, the they've got beautiful colors. Colors, mm, yes. You know, and music. You know, you can hear making a lot of music. When you've got problems, then place the, Matata as yeah. uh, as journalists and comrades, <laughs> politicians. Yeah. Yeah. If it's you I just sit, sit under this tree. this tree and then I listen to the music. It, it's then truly amazing. It's, it's healing. Yeah, but it's truly amazing <laughs> what the, the urbanization, mm. you know, takes away yeah. from this kind of natural setting. Absolutely. You know, uh, and, 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 I'm, and, and your staff was telling me you prefer to, to be in this yeah. particular home. Yeah, exactly. And so on. The, the, yeah. And, and I, I suppose that's what you need to, I to come I spent most now. of my yeah. time here. Yeah. I spent most of my time here. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. Okay, now let's go back to this thing. Uh, what, what I want to see whether I'll hear the music in your answer. Uh, when it comes to the disclaimers, what, what, how yeah. would you mm. characterize what causes so many disclaimers? I mean, six departments, that's like 60% mm. of your government. Mm. One, um, capability. Mm. You know, um, Minister Tito Mbawin has got uh, this thing of uh, saying that you may have capacity, mm. but that capacity may not have capability because mm. you may have you may have volumes of people that you appointed, mm. but you find that those people does, are not equal to the task. Mm. That's one of the things that was causing this, uh, this disclaimers. Mm. But secondly, it's uh, ill intentions. Sure. If you want to hide corruption, mm. then you'll make uh, documents uh, or re reference documents to, to disappear. disappear. Yeah. Then, uh, that sounds, that sounds like Alexander just Absolute. right there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just say two billion, it's just disappeared. The paper trail. Is you, gone. you can't find it anywhere. Mm. Yes, mm. that is what was happening. Until we say we claimed down and said to the financial, chief financial officer mm. of all government departments, we said if you get a disclaimer and you are a chief financial officer. Sure. Consider yourself disclaimed Fire. also. <laughs> <laughs> that did that work? Yes, it worked. Absolutely, because take for example the Department of Education. Yeah. It had not received any qualification, any opinion except yeah. disclaimers for about ten years. Oh my goodness. But currently in the past two years, at least three years. Yeah. In the past three years it was getting at least uh, qualification with uh, a lot of uh, findings, yeah. but those fi findings have now reduced drastically. We will not be surprised in the next financial year if the Auditor General can come and say the Department of Education and the Department of Health in Limpopo are unqualified. We'll not sure. be say we don't have a government department that yeah. gets a disclaimer now. So basically it's all about leadership. So you saying to me, if, mm. like we've just uh, confessed mm. earlier that w mm. where you have a difficult list municipalities, mm. if you are to have proper capacity and in capability yeah. in municipalities yeah. and leadership, Absolutely. then you could uh, uh, potentially come out of what is really a terrible situation where mm. the Auditor General has found almost no yeah. municipalities mm. that know what mm. they are doing mm. when it comes to, to, to finances. Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. Because the biggest problem in our municipalities now mm. is that, you know. But part of it is because we are a rural province. If you get a, a chartered accountant, for example, and you want to send that chartered accountant to Toyando, to to or Fita <laughs> Yeah, but you must just pay them uh, what you call an inconvenience fee, an allowance. Yeah, but they, are, they, 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 they don't, they don't stay long. They don't stay long. Oh, they'll stay and then they say, oh, I'm uh, sorry, I can um, be better somewhere else. Yeah, I remember one chartered accountant, I think it was in Tulanela, if I'm not mistaken. Um, he came for an interview and then <laughs> from there, when he, 
He was appointed. They showed him where he was going to stay. He said, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think know. you are raising a very, I don't, very important issue. I don't think issue. I went to school to come and suffer <laughs> like this. <laughs> I, but I truly did never thought of it that way. Mm. You know mm. why? Because my assumption is that with the kind of education system that has now been made accessible to all, mm -hmm. essentially there are chartered accountants in every corner of the country who are, who are from there. In fact, most of the chartered accountants in Gauteng, yeah. uh, Western Cape, mm. even KZN, mm. were, uh, were, 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 were produced by, in, in, in this province. But unfortunately, they could not... Uh, uh, find it in their hearts to their stay. to stay in, the, in this province. So no. are you saying to me, in your own assessment, mm. uh, that the capacity for, of municipalities uh, is, is, is directly proportional to the fact that we are a rural province mm. where people don't want to pursue careers? How do you solve that? It's, that is one of the factors. Sure. That is why Minister uh, Zuelim Kiza says we need to build, a, a, to, to sort of a constitute a app. Mm. Central is, say, maybe in Pulukwan we say we develop a hub of accountants that will service municipalities. Say, but they don't yeah. necessarily need sort to go an, and stay an agency, there. Yeah, at an agency. Is that, that a, so, is that a solution really if we're talking about well, a developmental state and, and having to ensure that it, we don't have migration to cities and rather we, 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 we create work where people live? It, it will be. It will be a solution because once you, you get that working, you will be in the position to can connect it with uh, academic institutions, mm. tertiary institutions. Uh, and at the end of the day, they assist you in terms of training and building capacity internally. Yeah. Right? But uh, the most important thing is that the multiply effect of that yeah. will be economic development because nobody wants to invest in a municipality that cannot account for its financial finances mm, mm. or in a province that cannot account for yeah. its finances. You want that kind of stability and, 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 and sort of authority. Yeah. So, so if you have that, you'll be able to attract investment and you'll be able to bring back an urbanization into the rural area, yeah. like what, what the Chinese did, you know. Or is it Jiangsen where there is a uh, war with? You yes. Know, it, uh, 20, um, about 20 years ago, prior to 1978, it was a bush. Mm. But now it's a big city mm. because they did exactly what I'm, I'm, I'm talking about. Yeah, which brings up the issue of the president saying we need to build a new city. Uh, is there a new city at all in, 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 uh, in Limpopo or we, we are, are battling building, to, we, we are going to dissolve to, old homeland uh, cities? Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to convince him. I'm trying to convince him yeah. to bring that new city to Musina, you know, so that we can have a border city. Because we already... Oh, so it's an international started, city. Yeah, because we have already started doing work with uh, yeah. our colleagues in Zimbabwe. You know? Okay. We have signed agreements. A lot of work is, uh, has already t uh, gone yeah. into the, the project. Uh, again, you've got this uh, special economic zone that is going to be developed in uh, Musina Makar. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have got already a commitment of about 150 billion rats from investments from uh, big uh, corporates from China, MCC of China, TNG, wow. Interesting. and the like. They, they've yeah. already committed themselves that they are going to, to, to invest in, in that SEZ. Yeah. So uh, it's just a question of time. You'll be having a city in a, a new a democratic city. Yeah. Uh, uh, but why didn't the president mention this in his state of a nation? Now he sounded like he wants to build a city from the first brick oh. and there's no plan, it's just a dream. <laughs> Surely this was, a, was the answer or is this now your dream now? This is my dream. Your dream. Yeah. <laughs> this is my dream. But the president did mention yeah. that there will be an SEZ in, uh, in, yes. in, in, in Messina. Yes. And he did mention that there already we have a commitment of investment to the tune of about... Uh, 10 billion yes. US dollars, mm. which uh, to my translation translates into 150 billion rands. Mm. All right, so just in terms of the, the, the legacy of the homelands, I want to, to come to that now because I was quite startled earlier on when we were talking that you're still dealing with the fact that there are people who are hired by yeah, Mbebu yeah. Mm. and who was Patu. the gentleman? Padu Ramadi came yeah. Right, yeah. But after 25 mm. years, we've not managed to say. This, there shouldn't even be any lingering 
issue mm -hmm. mm -hmm. are from Toy and the other ones are from uh, Guiani. Mm -hmm. I, I want you to tell me how you are dealing with that because it talks about social cohesion of the province. Are we forming as a province or are we like, you know, there are some universities and I mentioned the University of the Northwest, mm -hmm. which has three, that you see, you have three campuses. Mm -hmm. But if you are in Porsche and you are in Mafiki, you can see the difference. Mm -hmm. They have matched in name only. But frankly, mm -hmm. the, 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 if you like, the disadvantage of the other campus shows even today. Yeah. Are we still in that situation in the way we have matched in, in, because of the border being driven, drawn and a name changed from North to Limpopo? But social cohesion-wise, there are still difficulties. I want you to, talk, to, to address me on that uh, after the break. Okay. Yeah, we are talking.